Welcome back to a new video lecture and in this lecture we discuss a new topic and it is related with the analysis of curved beam. Today we discuss a problem related with this curved beam. So in the case of curved beam we already mentioned that there will be an extra analysis also to be done that is the torsional moment. Okay already we have to do this bending moment and shear force apart from that you have to do the torsional moment also. So here the question find the deflection at the free end of a quarter of a circular cantilever beam if it is loaded by a load p at the mid span p acting vertically downward radius of the circle is capital r so these are the given details and here you can observe that this, this is your question okay and a point load is acting at the mid span in between this a and b or you can see that this at an angle of 5 by 4 that is 45 degree okay so this is the case and here an open circle is provided here that's the load is acting downwards okay so our aim is to calculate the what, what about the deflection at the point b for that you have to consider a dummy load p naught at the point b so let the point, dummy load be p naught and you can also observe that this distance uh, if you are going to take a section over this section over here that is in between 0 to pi by 4 first of all you consider in between this 0 to pi by 4 if you are taking a section if the bending moment it is going to be if you are taking a section here the bending moment it is going to be this minus p naught multiplied by this distance this distance you can calculate from this triangle isn't it this triangle it will give r sin alpha if you take the rule that is sin alpha equals opposite side that is if you are taking that as x then by hypotenuse it is going to be r so x it is going to be r sin alpha then what about the torsional moment it is going to be p naught multiplied by this distance that is this y1 so how can you find out this y1 actually up to here it is going to be capital r and up to here it is going to be r cos alpha if you consider that particular triangle so you can say that that distance it is going to be y it is going to be r minus r cos alpha so that you can write down as r minus 1 minus cos alpha so if you multiply here you will get in this way that is m equal to minus p naught r sin alpha and torsional moment it is going to be p naught r 1 minus cos alpha so that's the case then after that we have to consider the section in between this pi by 4 and this pi by 2 that is in between this portion okay so here and here in between this portion you have to consider so here also if you consider we already know the value of this dummy load that is this minus p naught r sin alpha apart from that there will be load of this actual load that capital p for finding out that value you have to take this values okay so let us consider this total as alpha and this one is pi by 4 so this distance it is going going to be alpha minus pi by 4 okay so if you consider this distance this distance will be uh, actually it is going to be r multiplied by sin alpha minus pi by 4 okay so minus p multiplied by r minus p multiplied r multiplied by sin alpha minus pi by 4 okay this angle it is going to be alpha minus pi by 4 okay so and similarly you can calculate the torsional moment also in the case of torsional moment first of all you have to consider this value that is up to 0 to pi by 4 after that you have to take this value for finding out this value you have to take you have to find out this distance actually this value it is going to be r cos alpha minus pi by 4 and if you find out this small distance if you want to find out this small distance it is going to be r minus r cos alpha minus pi by 4 so it is going to be if you are taking this r outside it is will be 1 minus cos alpha minus pi by 4 then multiply with this p you will get 
this torsional moment. After that, the strain energy you can substitute in this way, that is integral m square by 2ei multiplied by dx and integral t square by 2gj multiplied by dx. Actually, this ds is the this small portion. Okay, so if you consider, you can directly calculate that value also. Okay. Okay, then then coming to this portion, that is, if you take the derivative, you will get the deflection. Okay, that is du by dp naught, that is a dummy load. If you take the derivative, that is m by ei multiplied by dm by dp naught. Since you are taking differentiating with respect to p naught, and this two actually it is going to be two m divided by two ei. Okay, if you are taking derivative, this two two will be cancelled. Here also same procedure and finally you will get this equation. And after finding out this uh, delta value, you can directly apply this, uh, you can directly calculate this value. So that is dm by dp0 and dt by dp0. And after that you can substitute that is p0 equal to 0 since there is no value for p0. Actually it is a dummy value. So uh, if you are finding out this, you can take, take down this value. So dm by p0, if you observe, our aim is to calculate this value, isn't it? That is, if you take a derivative with respect to p naught, you will get this value as minus r sin alpha. Okay, and here it is going to be zero. And this, what about this dt by p naught? dt by p naught, it is going to be, if you take the derivative, it, is, it will be r1 minus cos alpha. Okay, that's the case. So, this value is going to be this one. Okay. And here if you mention this one. So, after that, you can observe here uh, the m by ei value. Okay, m by ei value. So, if you observe, you have to directly substitute this value here, m. m value it is going to be this one. So, if you observe here, if you substitute this value, that is minus p naught minus p naught r sin alpha minus p r sin alpha minus pi by 4 then you have to multiply this value with the, this value that is dm by dp naught that is it is going to be r sin alpha okay so next our aim is to substitute p naught as 0 so this time it is going to be 0 okay so here it, there is a negative sign. So after that, if you multiply these values, as you will get PR, capital PR, then sine alpha minus pi by 4, then again R multiplied by sine alpha. So here if you observe those terms are here, PR, then sine alpha minus pi by 4, then R sine alpha. Then there is a term called R D, D alpha. How you got? That is this DX. So, if you observe here, if you are taking a section here, okay, let, let us take a section here. This value it is going to be r multiplied by d alpha. This small distance it is going to be d alpha. So, r, this small distance it is going to be dx. So, r d alpha will be there. Okay. So, that is the case of this uh, moment. Bending moment case, if you substitute, then similarly you have to do the work out the this case also. That is dt by dp not already we calculated that value. Then you have to substitute this t from here. T from here. If you substitute this t, then it will be uh, this p not r1 minus cos alpha plus p r1 minus cos alpha minus pi by 4. And then you have to substitute p not as 0. So you, the remaining times it is going to be this PR multiplied by this 1 minus cos alpha minus pi by 4. Then you have to cons you have to take this values as that is. Then you have to consider R multiplied by this values. Is. Okay, R multi this time only. R multiplied by 1 minus cos alpha. Okay, so you can directly get these values. So after finding out this uh, delta value, you can substitute this 
you can take consider this as gamma equal to ei by gj actually this a constant m for easy calculations we are taking this ei represents this flexural rigidity and this gj represents torsional rigidity okay so after that uh, throughout this equation multiply by ei then this ei will be cut down then here it is going to be gamma you can represent by gamma and take down the old all those terms is constants outside that is r multiplied by r so r cube will be here pr cube okay and if you here if you observe here it is going to be also the same term that is pr cube will be there and after that you have to apply a rule that is this formula this mathematical that is sin a multiplied by sin b equals sin a multiplied sin b equals this 1 by 2 multiplied by cos a minus b minus cos of a plus b and similarly cos a multiplied cos b it equals 1 by 2 cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b this equation you have to use with the help of that equations you can formulate the terms is okay so if you observe here you can see that this sin alpha minus pi by this is sin a multiplied by sin b so you can directly apply and you will get this values okay you will get this cos pi by 4 minus cos 2 alpha minus pi by 4 then after that you can hear this 1 minus cos alpha directly you have to write down and here you have to apply those formula and you will get this 1 by 2 multiplied by cos of 2 alpha minus pi by 4 plus cos pi by 4 okay so after that these equations you have to integrate start integrations that is you have to do that is integration is from pi by 4 to pi by 2 so here the term it is going to be cos pi by 4 so multiply with the alpha value that is the d alpha actually okay if your integration that that value will be there okay then here it is going to be sine then by 2 actually this 2 will be coming down so sine 2 alpha minus pi by 4 by 2 actually then the pi by 2 to pi by 4 upper limit and lower limit you can write down then taking this gamma outside and here also this alpha will be here here it will be sin alpha cos alpha integration it is going to be sin alpha here also sin alpha pi by minus 4 here it is going to be 1 by 2 multiplied by the integration directly you can apply here also here also after that you have to substitute those pi by 2 and pi by 4 values directly and uh, if you apply those values as you will get this equation as in this way 0 0.277 minus 0 0.06 gamma so actually there is no values as for this ei or p or r likewise or this gamma gamma actually ei by gj in this case so you can wind up with this okay so you can wind up with this general equation or if you want you can take this ei and pr cube to this side okay that is also no problem so that is the case of deflection at the point free at the free end actually okay at the free end you can easily calculate those deflection value so act so i hope the section is clear and with this we wind up today's section thank you